guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm in an undisclosed location and this is a special review that I've been waiting for and I know that you've been waiting for. This is going to be a full in-depth with a drive of the all-new 2020 Toyota Supra. Now before I dive into this, I just want to let you know that with this review, I have lowered my expectations and I think that is the challenge that many diehard Supra fans from that whole Mark IV generation really had their expectations super high. And then when the new generation was released, a lot of them were upset with what Toyota brought to the table. What I do know after having this press fleet vehicle for a few days now is that this Supra is way different than the previous generation. But one thing that is for sure is this Supra is a true enthusiast driving car. So let's go ahead, talk a little bit about Toyota Supra history. Supra has gone through its different generations, went from mild to wild, and now it's back again with the fifth generation, the Mark V, in a different type of way. Now, the design of this car all started as a concept. It was that FT1 concept car that was built right out of California, designed by to Toyota, got everybody so excited. I think the challenge is for Toyota is that to produce that FT1 the way that everybody wanted it, that car would have easily been ninety to over a hundred thousand dollars. What's wonderful with the way that this setup went down with connection to BMW is that you're going to get a lot of performance for a pretty good price and really styling that is growing on me every single day. So let's go ahead and dive into this all new 2020 Supra. Right off the bat, you'll see those lines. I'm sure you saw my reviews from the Detroit and the New York Auto Show. Headlight design is taken right from that FT1 concept. I love the multi-level LED uh, headlight design with your daytime running lamp. And I really think it's super sharp the way it kind of just blends right into the front fascia. Now, we've already gone over this and I will do it again. If you are new to the channel and this is your first review, we're going to have to zonk a few things fake vent top portion on both sides are fake so those are both zonks i wish that some of these vents were functional and i think for a high performance car it would have made sense to have them be functional this lower portion is you can see how the lower uh, front fascia really extends nicely i like the addition of the flat black and you can see the arrow treatment here this is not just for show this is for go this is going to help produce more downforce and airflow into the front section of the Toyota Supra. Now, as we come across to the mid section, I do like the design right here. This really harks back to that FT1 uh, concept car. This is all open and functional. I think it was super smart to take the flat black, extend it out, and really this portion here looks like an old Formula One car. I'd say from uh, late 1990s, early 2000s. I really like this design here. Um, and I think it fits the car perfect. Now, we continue across the front. There's our other fake vent on the other side, but this other portion is open. But definitely, I'm telling you right now, it grows on you the more that you look at it. Now, when you pop up onto the hood, I really love what's going on here. This U shape on the front actually fades away and then comes back up on the fenders of the hood. Very, very large hood. And when you open up the hood, you'll see that most of this fender is going to rise with it as well. Now, as we come around the bend, let's see what we're working with with wheel and tire setup. So this is what we're looking at. Standard wheel, 19 inch wheel. You got the gloss black and then this polished aluminum look, especially all the way around the rim. It, you know, it works. Uh, I do like the wheels a lot better. That's on the launch edition where they're just flat black, same style wheel just flat black. It's growing on me though. It's one of those cars that you just give it a little time and it starts to grow on you, especially the more that you drive it. Up front, you're looking at 255 on the width, 35 series sidewalls, and these tires are the business. These are the Michelin Pilot Super Sport tires. Now, they're not Cup 2s, so the good news is you could daily drive this. You're going to get some nice stick, but you're also going to get some great grip. You can see the four piston caliper. I'm a little disappointed. I wish that these would be at least six piston Brembo calipers with some cross drilled rotors. I think that was a missed opportunity. So I am going to zonk the brake setup, but you'll see when we do the drive, these brakes do 
perform the business perfectly. You could actually stop on a dime and give people change. Now, going up onto the hood fender, here's that other elephant in the room. You do have another fake vent. That to me is a total missed opportunity. That should be a heat extractor. Bringing the air from the front, having it exit out the top here, I think would make perfect sense. And on the race car that was designed right next to the street car, it is functional. So that to me should be totally functional. I actually like the flat black on the mirrors. It works with this. Gloss black on the A pillar, probably one of my favorite things about this car is as you go towards the back. So you can see the design in the roof. It has a really, really nice shape to it and it curves down so nicely into the rear glass. Very sharp quarter window. Here's another missed opportunity. So we have another fake vent. So plenty of fake vents, so we're gonna zonk this. Think about this. I was, I was doing a little bit of, of dreaming. Let's take this piece off the door, still keep the same shape, but then have the vent back here on the rear fender to actually cool the brakes and the rear differential. That to me would make sense. Does it look good? Yeah. Is it fake? Yes. I do like the lower side sill extension, very nicely placed. You could see the aerodynamic treatment. These are functional pieces. Everything on this car has an airflow purpose to it, even though it may not be flowing air directly through it. As we go into the rear fenders, drop dead sexy. This reminds me almost like of a Porsche 911 turbo flared out fender. When you're behind the wheel and you look in your side view mirror, that's all you see is this beautiful shape. Even when you're washing the car, I love just wiping my hand on it to dry and to wash. It's got a wonderful flow. Coming off that roof, like I told you, you have that nice dip there, comes down the rear glass into this duck bill spoiler. This is probably one of my favorite. I know I'm going crazy with the favorites, but the back part of the, of the vehicle is my favorite. I love this duck bill spoiler. The way that they did the LED taillight design is drop dead gorgeous. Nice, wide, and low. You got your superscript, and then a massive flat black rear diffuser, twin exhaust outlets, and you see these guys right here? This is not your third brake light. Your third brake light's actually up in the rear window. This is your LED for your reverse light. Very, very clean, very personable, uh, you know, so spot on, workable. GR, I know you're probably wondering what does that mean? It actually goes with Gazoo Racing. They're the ones that handle all of the racing over in Europe, specifically road racing and rally racing. But we talked about this super from front to back. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and see what's powering it. All right, guys, we got the massive hood open. You have two hood struts. Underneath that is the big talking piece. It's not a 2JZ. You're not gonna find Vin Diesel under the hood. What you are gonna find that is that three liter straight six twin turbocharged engine, 335 horsepower, 365 pound-feet of torque, it's mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission, weight 3,397 pounds, MPGs not too shabby, 24 in the city, 31 on the highway. This car, the numbers are not 100% correct. There's definitely more horsepower coming out of the new Super because zero to 60, 3.8 seconds, quarter mile in 12.5 at 112 miles an hour. What can I say? Can, we could sit here and cry and moan that it's not a 2JZ, it's not a Toyota engine, but at the end of the day, the two companies, BMW and Toyota, did work together, and I'm telling you, when it comes to driving, just wait, because it makes all the right sounds, and it really performs like a champ. Speaking of sounds, let's fire up the heart of the new Supra and see what it sounds like. Alright guys, we're inside the 2020 Supra. It's interesting because once you get inside, you feel maybe a little cramped. You feel like the roof is kind of curved in on you. Give it some time. Lori sat in this car at the LA Auto Show and she thought for sure she was going to hate it because of how it felt cramped. If you give it some time, you get used to it and it feels very, very purposeful. Now I know you're probably saying, well Joe, what's the price of this? This one is a premium trim. There was also the launch edition. Those have pretty much all been spoken for. You're looking around MSRP in that mid $50,000 range. 
let's see what you get for the money. Now to the door panels, there is a lot of just dark black material, but I like the contrast stitching on the leather on the armrest. You have a little bit of this flat gloss black, which actually does not show fingerprints. Does have the optional JBL sound system. I like the silver on the door handle, but you'll notice that if you get in a Z4, because remember the Z4 and the Supra on the same basic chassis, the interior is still different than the Supra. And they have done engineering to the suspension, the ECU tune, this car behaves differently, I promise you, than a Z4. I like the soft material on the dash, the stitching, the silver trim, nice shaped AC vents. This is all gonna be very familiar to the BMW fans. That's your BMW iDrive infotainment system. It is touchscreen. You can put up your three different selections and whatnot. Of course, it's got your navigation, um, but very clean, very crisp. It is a little on the high side, but like I said, give it some time and it all kind of makes sense. There's no glare on it, which is amazing. You drop down, you got a tasteful start stop button, slim and trim radio controls. You got your dual climate, heated seats, but no ventilated seats. That to me is a zonk. This should have ventilated seats. You do get wireless charging, USB, a 12 volt, and then beautiful carbon fiber spilled everywhere. This is gonna control that ZF eight speed automatic transmission. You can switch it over and put it into manual mode. Also, I'm gonna have Tom kind of show the infotainment system again. There is your backup camera. You have full directionals, and I love uh, the image and technology that is there to warn you of items, people, cars, whatnot, that may be in your way as you're maneuvering your Supra. This is that BMW iDrive control. Now, what's nice about the Supra is they kind of made it simplistic. In the Z4, you have many different levels of um, different parameters, sport, this, that, sport plus. This one is just sport and normal. And you're just gonna hit this nice large button right there, makes it so easy. Shut your traction control off, electric e-brake. Now the armrest is as hard as a German or a Japanese rock. I don't care what rock you're picking up. And it's interesting how the cup holders have just been cut in. There's no actual lifting of the lid. You got a little cubby area where I put my garage door opener. Seats, pure sexy. I love the silver trim here. The design, the stitch work, both sides are electric assist and they're so comfortable yet supportive. One of the big pluses of the Supra. I like that trim down below. And then even like I said, six feet tall, I got plenty of headroom because of that roof from that outside design coming into the inside. It's like they carved with a carving nice knife the inside here so you can get that helmet on and you're ready to rock and roll. Speaking of rock and rolling, get on over to the business end. I wanna show you behind the wheel of this Supra. All right, guys, you can see how the roof kind of curves down. Don't let that freak you out. It's not like sitting in a Camaro or a cave, as I like to call that interior. You do have two memory settings on the uh, driver's seat, which is nice. There's all your electric controls, real low, steering wheel. It's actually the perfect size. My big zonk is I do not think the horn button fits the car. Very unattractive. It looks like a bumper off of a bumper car. You ever seen the steering wheel on a bumper car? It's got that bumper to protect your noggin. Here's another missed opportunity. I would like to see a Supra script right here. This kind of just looks a little cheap, but you do have that flat gloss black plastic, if that even makes sense. It doesn't leave fingerprints. Look at that. No fingerprints. Flat black on the controls. You got your thumb wheels. You got your paddles to go up and down that eight-speed automatic transmission. And then the dash is a thing of beauty. I love the way the tack is right in the center. I do have it in sport mode, so you can see how everything is red. Let me go ahead and just kind of show it to you right there. Very nicely done. You got your digital speedometer on the left, and then information that could pop up on the right. Plus, you have a heads-up display. Now, the heads-up display, I'm a little disappointed. It just shows speed in miles per hour or kilometers, and it also tells you what the speed limit is. There's no tachometer. There's no shift indicate, nothing. There's doesn't even tell you what gear you're in. So that to me is a missed opportunity uh, and I am gonna zonk that. But overall, I just love sitting in this new Supra. Let's go ahead, check out the cargo area and see if you could use this as a daily driver. All right guys, time to check out the cargo area. Before we do, I wanna talk about two different things. Those beautiful rear fenders, they're housing 275 width rear wheels and tires. Now, the reason why that's like that, that staggered setup is that the tires up front are 255. That's going to give you quicker steering. Since this is rear wheel drive, we want a little bit more rubber meeting the road to give you better traction. To get into the hatch, let me show you the key fob. 
it's a little on the plastic side. I wish it was a little fancier, especially this coming from, uh, you know, conjunction with BMW. There's your buttons on the back. But to get in, you just push the button, it pops, real easy lift. It's a little on the tight side opening, but once you get in, there's plenty of room there. Especially for a two-seat car, they really did a great job to make this a usable daily driver. Lori and I went and got groceries with this, not a problem. Up top, I wanna to point out, you see that bright piece of silver here? This is a um, strut top brace to help stiffen out the back of the car. So the front end's been stiffened out, the back of the car has been stiffened to help give you better uh, overall feel and drivability as you're going down those twisty roads. But why don't we get to the best part? If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's take this Supra for a spin. All right, guys, let's do an acceleration test in the Supra on throttle. Very fast shifts from that ZF, eight speed on the brakes, really great feedback. That's the thing is that this is a driver's car and that's why there's really no reason to be disappointed that it's not like the old Supra because the good news is, this is a Supra and it is for the driver. The feedback from the front of the business through the wheel is heaven. You could feel every little pothole divot mark in a really, really great way. That's the good news. Brakes feel good. The sound from the engine, the paddles are perfectly placed on throttle. Here we go. I have it in sport mode. Really smooth. Holds a line so stable. Oh man, this thing is unbelievable, the performance. I'm telling you right now, if you didn't think that this was a performer, because it's not like the old Supra, you are wrong. Look at that, we stopped right on a dime. Let's go ahead, do another acceleration run here. Traction control does the business. Fast shifts, very, very fast. On the brakes, nice. The sounds, the pops, the crackles, it's making all the right noise. Look at this. Woohoo! This is what it's all about, guys. to me is an enthusiast car and at the end of the day it is unlike the zf uh, excuse me not the zf the z4 roadster it's just not it's totally different animal it really feels like a different car the chassis engineering is different the way that the um, parameters of the ecu obviously this has a hard top and i'm telling you right now this car has more than 335 horsepower I'm telling you that right now somebody is fibbing and i'm okay with it and then driving on the highway, it's smooth. The seats are so comfortable and supportive. I love the visibility out the front and you, I'm, all this little curved roof goes away. It just goes away. It's unbelievable what they've done with this car, whether it's Toyota, BMW, the two of them, they, they made it a winner. I'm ready to go again. Are you ready? I'm ready. On throttle, on the brakes. Downshift, nice. Second gear, look at this. Look at this. Back swing, swings out just a little bit so you can square off the turn. Look at this, this is wonderful. Look at this. On the brakes, downshift. So smooth, so 
very smooth. Great feedback. Feel, oh my God, this thing is just incredible. On the brakes, downshift through this nice long right-hander on throttle. Here we go. Back on the brakes, downshift. Real, this is one of my favorite parts right here. Boom. And then we got it right here. Here we go, here we go. On throttle. Yes. Shifts. Crisp, fast, controllable. On the brakes. Down shift. Here we go. Nice decreasing radius. Yes. Oh my God. This car is amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Yeah, um, this one will make uh, give you an eargasm. It may give you some other gasms too. Uh, that's one hell of a car. Uh, I'm just glad to be able to share this with you. Hopefully, it opens up your eyes. You know, I'm not saying the car is perfect, but I am saying it's an enthusiast car. Is it a true Supra like the old generation? Of course not. But we got to be careful what we wish for nowadays because. You know, people want to bring back the S2000. They want to bring back all these cars from the past. But the bottom line is it, it just can't be done like it was during that time period. That's why I feel very lucky and blessed to have been in high school in the 90s, in the early 90s, and drool over cars like the Supra and the 300ZX Twin Turbo because, unfortunately, that time has passed. And But, boy, this kind of shows what a little cooperation could do of two companies that are about car enthusiasts. But anyways, we need to get back. Uh, I'm probably gonna get myself in trouble if I, if I do another lap, but uh, definitely this car is an eye-opener and something that you need to experience for yourself. And I'm just glad to be able to share it with you. Thank you for all your support. I'll see you back at the undisclosed location in a split second. All right, guys, it's been one heck of a time with this 2020 Toyota Supra definitely changed my view of the car spending some time with this car really getting to know it in and out and enjoy it for its purpose toyota and bmw did do a bang up job even with the flaws because remember there is no perfect car but really it's nice to see the super name alive and definitely doing well i want to thank corey and the rest of the crew over at toyota for allowing me access to this toyota super press fleet vehicle I know that they enjoy seeing the reviews and I'm sure you did as well. If you want to keep seeing cars like this, this particular Supra, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to Big Guns McGee. Even his mind has been changed. And believe it or not, there's only certain people, certain things that could change Tom's mind. So very impressed with the Supra. Thank you, Tom, for all your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.